Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you guys are going to enjoy your day. So today I want to talk about Kanika Jenkins. Now, three months ago, we learned that there had been a settlement reached um, in the Kanika Jenkins case and in which her mom was originally suing um, the hotel for the uh, death of Kanika Jenkins. And she had originally sued for $50 million. She actually received a little over $6 million. Um, this says a settlement agreement was reached in August, which is, you know, according to the court records. But terms of the deal were not made public until Tuesday. We're talking about three months ago when this was written, right? Just when the case had been scheduled to go to trial, they settled, the hotel actually settled before the case was scheduled to go to trial, right? The settlement totals $10 million um, with more than 3.5 million going to the family's attorneys, more than 6,000 going to more than 6,000 going towards her funeral costs and more than 6.4 million to be split between Jenkins' mother and two other relatives, right? Now, those are the facts. That is what um, the settlement amount really was, not 50 million because people are originally thinking that she actually got the $50 million or $30 million. She actually got $6.4 million, but a total of $10 million between attorney fees on um, paying off the funeral costs and what goes to the family, right? So people have been, certain people, which I call agent provocateurs, have been currying on all kinds of cons conspiracy theories um, after the settlement was reached, right? Now, my issue is if I was Teresa Jenkins, um, if just let me say this before I get into some other facts. If I was Miss Teresa, I would sue people like Trey Gang. Um, I don't like to say other content creators' names, but I think that in my opinion, and I have a right to my opinion, just like you guys have a right to your opinion. Um, and Trey Gang even have has a right to spin all these conspiracies against Teresa Jenkins in order for him to keep receiving blood money or maybe he is an agent provocateur, like I said, or both. Um, everybody has the right to do what they want. I can't run somebody as a channel, but this is just my opinion. But uh, in my opinion, Trey Gang is particularly disgusting. Um, I know that you guys like his theories. This is now turned into an urban legend, right? And I did a video about that. And the reason why it turned into an urban legend, in my opinion, is because none of us really knows um, or knew, you know, definitively, and we will never know definitively what actually happened to Kanika Jenkins uh, on the night that she was, you know, uh, you know, killed in the hotel, right? Now, I still have my theories as to why nobody has been arrested. And in my opinion, the reason why nobody has been arrested is because of what I'm supposed to talk about. But when it comes to, I think, two separate crimes, I still think two separate crimes were committed against Kanika Jenkins. I think that her frenemies, Monifa and Shamaya, and maybe even Irene, um, were paid the $200 that people were talking about um, to not only drug Kanika Jenkins' drink. We saw Monifa and Kanika in the hotel bathroom. Uh, the only drink that Kanika had was the one Monifa poured for her. I think that that's just when Kanika was drugged. There were drugs found in her system um and everybody said she didn't you know do drugs or whatever so why was this drug how did this drug get into her system not only that she didn't even want to stay at the party right to the point to where after she was drugged um she was placed into, in the hallway and they monifa and shamaya said they went back in the hotel room um to get her phone i think that they went back in the hotel room um, because they got her out, placed her up against the wall. I think they went back in the room to ask whoever it was that was paying them to set her up, what what they want to do um, with her, or where do they want um, her them to take her, right? So I think that Kanika knew that she was in trouble. I think that she got up and tried to escape, but she was the drug. She was so heavily drugged that we know we saw her wandering around the hallways, right? We also know that um, that Shamaya um, and Monifa and a whole lot of people um, went searching for her. But in my opinion, when it comes to Shamaya and Monifa, 
I think they knew. Uh, I, I, I think they knew that she had gotten up and tried to get away. So they want to, you know, they they act like they want to participate in the search party. We see uh, Monifa on the phone texting somebody when she's supposed to be looking for her friend, not seeming upset at all, you know. And she's still continuing to text somebody throughout this whole the whole duration of, of when she was trying to find um, Kanika, right? So also, I, you know, and so. That's the first crime I think that was perpetrated against her. I think that they played a role, um, you know, and they said that they wanted to, um, a rival gang wanted to do something to her because of something that her brother or her uncle or her uncle had done to them, right? And so I think they did pay Shamaya and Monifa and maybe even Irene um, to get her intoxicated and get her to a certain spot in the hotel. Um, and I think that's why she was drugged. This is my opinion. That is the first crime that was perpetrated against her. I don't think that they um, caused her untimely demise, however, or even the rival gangs. And we don't. And I think I don't think that because of the second crime. Now, when it comes to the second crime, we see uh, Kanika uh, getting up. You know, when she had to get up off the wall. She had to get to the hotel. I mean, you know, get to the elevator. And we saw her wandering around the hotel. They said she was wandering around the hotel for about an hour. So I think another person that I have always suspected is the security guard. I think that security guard, which he had went to the room a couple of times and asked them to calm down. Um, he told him that he smelled weed, you know, out in the hall. So they put, um, so they tried to quiet down um, so they wouldn't have to be put out. Um, they also put rags under the door um, people said that so that the weed smell wouldn't be so strong in the hallway. And like I said, I think I think I see. I, I believe my theory is that security guard saw her on camera, and when he saw her on camera, um, he went to get Kanika for nefarious reasons, right? Because there are several frames where he is walking up and down the hallway, right? And I have always stated in in photos like this that there is no way Kanika could be standing on her own that somebody had to be holding her up. And I think that somebody was the security guard. Like I, I really do, right? And now I finally have proof of it. But what we don't know are the specific details, like I said, of what happened after she got on that elevator and she was trying to get to safety, right? Until now, we know now, right? Because after um, all of these years, a video miraculously surfaced that I've never seen before um, of, of what I believe, the, who I believe the, the, the second set of perpetrators were against Kanika, right? And we also have been wondering for years, how in the world did Kanika get behind this locked door? Because behind this locked door was a old kitchen that nobody used, right? And so we have been, some of us have been speculating for years, um, how did she get behind this locked door? Some people saying that the door was open, the door was clearly um, not opened by Kanika, it was supposed to be locked um, at all times. So you have to ask yourself, who unlocked the door, right? So that she could walk through this kitchen um, that nobody used, right? And so like I said, y'all follow me here, a video surfaced of what I believe happened to uh, who the perpetrators were. And I believe that the reason why these perpetrators were never brought to justice um, is simply because the hotel um, did not want to admit um, that the hotel employees were the ones, um, I think that, um, you know, honestly killed Kanika, in my opinion, right? A video also surfaced a while ago that Really, two two or three years ago, I saw this video um, of these ladies. I think her name is Star or something like that. She does some kind of psychic readings now. And to where they were trying to, um, they were saying that Kanika Jenkins was in a bag, right? And the, the security guard was dragging her body in a bag, right? Now, some people believe that this theory was true and some people did, right? But now... We actually have definitive proof, some people believe as well as I, that this bag right here is not a bag of trash that the security guard is pulling behind. It is actually a body, you know, and it looks like a body. You know, dimensions, the dimensions look like a body, right? 
This also happened on the same night um, after Kanika Jenkins went, went missing, right? And so uh, if you can remember, there was a there was trash bag, there was a something that looked like plastic on her nails, right? When they found um, you know, her body, right? Now my thing is, how is it that after the police, let's fast forward to after um Teresa Jenkins um called the police. She called the police, she finally made it to the hotel the next morning, um, because you know, she didn't have her car, Kanika had her car, and Shamaya and them had to get, bring her back her car. So after they brought her back her car, which is also why I don't understand how anybody can say that Miss Teresa had something to do with this. After they brought her back to the car, she then went to the hotel, she called the police. The police, they say the police searched the hotel for almost 24 hours, right? So at some point uh, in the search, the beverage manager goes straight to the freezer where they found Kanika. He went straight there. He didn't, you know, he didn't, you know, veer off to the side. You know, he was act like he, act like like acting like he was looking for her for a long time. But he gets there. He goes straight to the freezer and says he found Kanika Jenkins. After hours and hours um, of the police searching the hotel, the beverage man, the, the beverage manager miraculously finds Kanika's body in that freezer, right? But what we didn't know is what I suspect um, is the beverage manager knew where she was all along. And the reason why I think he knew where she was all along is because of the video footage. Uh, we know that there was lots and lots of distorted um, you know, a, a video footage. Um, it had been edited over and over again, not only by the hotel, um, but also, uh, you know, by, you know, many of our online detectives trying to break down what went on, right? And sometimes things are in your face and people will tell you that that you're not seeing what you're seeing, you know, which is in the case of Tere uh, uh, when it comes to blaming Miss Teresa. Because she clearly didn't have anything to do with this, um, in, in my opinion. Now, I don't know how that narrative got spun, but people like Trey Gang, like I said, have been getting blood money out of this theory, which I think he's one of the agent provocateurs. He's not the only, he wasn't the only agent provocateur at the time involved with covering up this this, this crime. You know, uh, you have also um, the hotel I think you have the Rosemont, allegedly the Rosemont Police Department covered it up. And like I said, if you can remember back to them when they were saying that, you know, they were going to, you know, sell her body, you know, from, from uh, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, what do you call it, organ harvesting and, 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 you know, and all of this and all of that. There were all kinds of theories being spun. But I think that um, Kanika was assaulted uh in one spot and moved to another spot and like i said we saw um that footage of that uh of the cart that looked like a body kanika was in a body you know her, her bag was in the body and we saw this footage right here um and we know that her foot got caught on something uh, you know what we believe was then that is how that sore got on her foot not only that oh i went to show this here yeah hold on hold on wait a minute we know that this is how we believe that this is how you know she was found with one shoe on, one shoe off. Um, she clearly had a bruise on her foot, um, and a lot of people were speculating as to how she got that bruise on her foot. But there is now video surf surface video of footage surfacing how exactly how she got that bruise on her foot. We also seen the guy coming from behind the coming um behind the cart um actually with a mop right following the court with a mop and i believe that he was mopping up um the blood that came from her foot after um they had knocked her foot up against the thing trying to get her her, her bag in the body you know make it trying to make it seem like they're moving trash from one spot to another and she hit her foot and then there, there's the guy with the mop and it, that i had been looking at this guy with this mop um he had been all over the hotel that night Nobody could put that together. A lot of people didn't pay attention to it because it looked like he was just doing his job. But in my opinion, the reason why he was he had that cart is because her foot got caught on this thing right here in this old kitchen that nobody used, that they were supposed to be repaired. Um, so he came behind him after the assault um, and was bopping up the blood that was dripping um, from her foot. 
right? That's what that's what it seems like on the video, right? And also, um, she was assaulted in this old kitchen, and we know that she was taken to another kitchen where her body was put in a freezer, right? And so when her body was put in the freezer, people were asking, well, why did the police um, give uh, Miss Teresa um, Kanika's belongings? I think they gave her her belongings. You know, she had lip gloss and stuff like that that was on the floor. I do believe that they gave her that bag with those items in it. Um, is because it, it it was. I think they, you know, they knew um, by this point in time what had actually happened to um, Kanika, and I think that they were they knew because they had a connection to the Rosemont Hotel um, owner as well as the police department as well as the Oregon Harvesting Place. Um, they knew what had happened to her, and it was just simply a part of the cover. Why would they keep evidence that they weren't going to use that they didn't need anyway? Because they had no, um, you know, uh, no, no intention of investigating the case. The intention, in my opinion, was to cover up what had happened to Kanika, right? And so we had been seeing this footage, like I said, but we couldn't put it together, right? Some of us couldn't put it together, but like I said, I seen a video a couple of years ago, um. And also, I'm going to put these videos on my community wall. If you guys are still listening, please go to community wall and look at the actual videos. I don't do videos, but I found those videos that I'm talking to you guys about. And if you guys will please take a look at those videos, you will see what actually happened to her. Now, like I said three months ago, um, a video surfaced that I had never seen before. It had actual footage of what happened, um, what we believe happened to Kanika Jenkins. For instance, and, and, and I think, and I always wondered why they never did a rape kit um, on Kanika Jenkins. When we got the autopsy report, we didn't get um, any information as to a rape kit. And we know when we saw those crime scene photos that it looks like her pants had been, uh, you know, they, her pants were clearly pulled down and they tried to lift, they, they tried to pull her pants back up, right? So in this unedited video, the first time that I seen it, you see this guy. Is he comes out of the back. This is after um or before the car. I, I think this is before they put her, they had probably already put her body in the bag. But he was a lookout. He comes out, he's zipping up his pants. It looks like he's adjusting himself. And it looks like he's, you know, looking to see um if somebody is watching. So he's looking right and left, in my opinion, before they bring the body. Um, out from the back after they, in, in my opinion, had had assaulted her. So he's on the lookout. And why would he be on adjusting his pants? And after you see him on the video um, looking out after that is when you see the car, you see Kanika's foot, what I believe is her foot in the bag getting caught. And after that, you see the guy with the mop following the car. And after that, you see uh, the security guard, which was pushing the car, in my opinion, dragging uh, what looks like Kanika's body down the stairs. I think he's dragging her down that slope because the cart, you know, the, the cart probably would have got away from it. It was too heavy. So they had to take her body out of that cart and drag her down um, to the bottom right here. Um, and I think after they did that, I think they put, I think they put her back in the cart and wheeled her body um, to the, the other the other kitchen where the beverage manager found her body in the freezer. Right. That is what I think happened. And so but there is actual video footage, uh, finally unedited video footage um, of this guy zipping his pants, being on the lookout um, and also her body in the bag and also um, of the guy uh, mopping up the blood um, that came um, as a result of him, her foot getting caught. Um, on the on the this dish rack right here right i think that this is a security guard pushing her right as well as dragging her down the thing but if you guys will please go to my community wall like i said you can see uh i'm put two videos the video from a couple of years ago um as well as the unedited version of that video um that came from layla lynn shout out to layla lynn because i like the video that layla lynn is showing is a video that i've never seen before um, it's, it's unedited footage of them trying to dispose of Kanika's body, right? And also of the guy coming behind 
um the cart mopping up what uh I think is blood right here, right? This this spot right here, this spot was left um after the cart moved along, after they moved after her foot was hit. Uh, and after the cart had been taken to another location, then it's when the, the guy came behind them with a mop, um, mopping up the, the blood spots that uh, came about as a result of her foot getting caught um, on this dish rack right here. Like I said, this is a, we know that this is the old kitchen, and nobody used this kitchen because the poster had been under construction. It was supposed to have been under lock and key. There was no, no way that Kanika could have got into this kitchen by herself, right? And so for years, I, I, I couldn't figure out why was this guy, you know, cause seemingly he's just, you know, doing his job. This is the night shift. I guess he's just supposed to be bopping spots. No, he was following this cart right here um, because this is where Kanika was in the bottom of it, right? And her foot got caught and she was bleeding. I also, um, don't know, and we will never know if she was already dead by the time she was put in the bag. I think, I think that she was assaulted, and I think that after she was, she might have even still been alive after she was assaulted. And I think, but when they placed her in that bag, I think that she smothered um in that bag. I also think that it's why um the plastic bag, those particles were found on her fingernails. She may have been trying to open the bag so that she can breathe, unfortunately, right? And like I said, I can't see why um, they spent this whole scenario about Miss Teresa um, having something to do with this, right? It's turned into an urban legend. People have all kinds of conspiracy theories. Um, I stopped doing the videos, you know, three months ago. If you have been watching me on my other channel, you will know that since 2017, um, this, case, this case has always haunted me, right? But we had seen so much distorted video, so much edited and re-edited and edited again video to where the case spun out of control. Nobody had been arrested. There were several suspects. We even saw a video, no pictures of the security guard after the police took him that disappeared off the internet because I can't find them anywhere. But I remember seeing um, the, video, the, the pictures um, that the police took of the security guard's hands um, and it had defensive wounds on his arms and his hands. Um, after that, the, uh, they, they, they questioned him and a little bit after that, they couldn't find him and he allegedly went back to his, fled back to his home country, right? I think he fled back to his home country um, because he didn't want to be arrested. But I think that the hotel covered this up clearly I don't know why the actual video of the guy zipping up his pants came out after, but I suspect it came out after she received the $6 million because somebody had this video footage the whole time, right? And they wanted us to, you know, you know, finally know, you know, what happened to Kanika Jenkins. Also, I think that Zach TV um, was murdered. I think there was a hit put out on him. I don't know if the hit was from the hotel or from the, uh, or from the, the gang members that were planning to do something to Kanika, you know, but they even got off. They had to have a high powered attorney um, to get away with killing Zach TV. And they got off um, with some mutual combat law that was ancient, right? So they got away with killing him. So that tells me that somebody um, with a whole lot of money had to get these guys off um, from killing him by using some kind of ancient mutual combat law, right? I'm thinking what, but anyway, they got away with it. Um, the the I think that the security guard and whoever else, uh, I think that she was um SA'd by not only the security guard but the other two people, the guy that was zipping up his pants, also the guy that came along with the mop. You know, I think um that she was SA'd by all three of them, and then after that, her body placed in that bag. Um, and move to another part of the hotel. Now, I think they were originally planning to dispose of her body when they put her body in the other freezer where they found her. I think that it got so hot after the police was called, they just had to leave her there, right? And they didn't know what to do after the police had came in uh, and searched in a hotel. They searched for hours. And like I said, then you see the beverage manager going directly to the freezer where her body was found, Miss Teresa said 
um, that there wasn't a camera above that freezer, but it looked like it had been. I think that camera had been removed um, because whoever placed her in the freezer, which I think was a security guard, um, I, I think they removed the, the, the camera in an effort to, um, you know, uh, you know, keep from, you know, everybody knowing what actually happened to her so the hotel wouldn't be sued for more money, right? That is what I think, right? And that is what I think happened to Kanika Jenkins. And like I said, after I seen that video three months ago on Layla Lynn's channel, um, it kind of, you know, made sense to me. People will tell you, try to convince you that you didn't see what you saw, right? Which has gone on for years with people like Trey Gang. Right now, people, we know that um, in 2017 there was a whole uh, a section of you know people trying to figure out what happened to Kanika Jenkins, right? And we were going you know around and around with all these theories, with all this video. Um, when but we now know. Um, I, I think for me, um, I can put it to rest. And the reason why it took me so long to do this video is because after I seen that Layla Lynn video. It kind of explained to me in my mind, um, you know, it kind of put together, you know, her last moments for me. And like I said, for me, I feel like there were two separate crimes. I feel like her frenemies, uh, Monifa and Shamaya, and maybe even Irene, I think they were actually paid that $200 um, to drug her and take her, you know, to some other part of the hotel so that the rival gangs allegedly could do whatever it was that they were planning to do to Kanika. I think that Kanika knew she was drugged. Then after she was placed in that hallway, it took her out to the hallway because she said she was ready to go home. Remember, and Shamaya, she sent Shamaya and Monifa. They said they went in there to get her phone, but they was in there long enough. Why were they in there so long if they went in there just to get the phone, right? And so my theory is, once again, that when they went in the room, they were actually talking um, to the to the, the rival gang members trying to figure out well, what where they wanted um, Kanika put so that the gang members could get a hold of her. Now, if you remember, when you was watching the videos, we saw one of the guys with a hoodie on um, that looked like he was looking for Kanika, um, but he looked frantic and trying to find her, and he was by himself. He wasn't with the other search party. He wasn't with uh, Monifa and Shamaya and... Uh, I forget the other girl's name, or the one that left with the guys in the car, uh, and, and and the two guys uh, um, that said that they were searching, I can't think of their names, that they were searching for Kanika, right? Um, he wasn't with them, he was by himself, and it looked very strange and very suspect that he was trying to find Kanika also. And that is, that is I think that he was part of the gang that wanted to do something to, to uh, Kanika, but they couldn't find her either. The reason why they couldn't find her is because the security guard and his crew had already taken her and they were probably um, either done with doing what they were going to do to her or in the process of doing it um, when everybody was looking for Kanika. And like I said, when it comes to Zach TV, rest in peace, Zach TV, I think that Zach found out, found out exactly what happened. Um, I don't know if he found out what happened uh, to her, uh, you know, when it comes to the security guard and the other and, and the other two employees that were involved, I don't know if he found out about that, or he found out about, you know, what the rival gang was planning to do to her. I don't know if he found out about that. I don't know if he found out about everything, but we know that while he was on the broadcast, some lady, some anonymous woman, um, called Zach, um, and told him to leave it alone. We know that his house was broken into. The only thing that was stolen out of his house was his, uh, you know, electronic equipment like his laptop and whatever um, electronic device they took out of there that they thought um, some kind of video footage was on or whatever. So that's what makes me think that maybe perhaps the hotel put a hit out on him. Because like I said, all of these guys, um, you know, got away with doing this and it had to be somebody powerful um, enough to uh, with enough influence uh, in order for these guys to get off with killing Zach TV um, based on some kind of mutual combat law because we know that people have been put in jail um, for murder for less evidence. And we saw these guys actually get out the car um, trying to attack Zach. We know his body was found in the alley. Um, and it was they tried to sweep it under the rug as some kind of type of random attack. 
you know that it wasn't any type of random attack. And I, but like I said, at the end of the day, I think people started suspecting Miss Teresa um, because they seen the police give her a, a baggie which had the rest of Kanika, whatever Kanika had on her, and they found in the freezer. Um, they gave her the evidence. Why would you give her the evidence? I think it was part of the cover up. I think that the reason why they never mentioned a rape kit being done on her um, is because it was Rosemont Police Department and they were in on allegedly the cover up, in my opinion. I think that the Rosemont Police Department um, never intended on solving this case because that the, they know that the whole, if they solved the case, um, the hotel really would have got, I think Ms. Teresa, when she sued them, would have gotten more than $6 million. Now, the case had been going on for seven years, and I really just think Ms. Teresa was tired of fighting, and she settled for the um, $10 million to pay off the lawyer fees, the rest of the funeral fees, um, and she split the $6 million with, um, with uh, herself and two other family members. So I think that she was tired of fighting all of this time. Do I think that Miss did Miss Teresa finally figure out what happened to to Kanika? I think she did. You know, um, I also think she never came out and publicly stated what actually happened to her daughter because maybe there was some kind of gag order placed in the settlement to where she wouldn't mention it, and maybe that's why they finally came out with an unedited version of what happened to Kanika. Um, like like I said, you see the guy, why is the guy uh, coming out looking very suspicious, like he's looking around the corner trying to, you know, figure out is anybody looking, and he's also adjusting, you know, his clothes, his pants or whatever, you know, and so, guys, that is what I think happened to Kanika, in my opinion. Now, like I said, I don't know why people like Trey Gang, uh, he's the only one I know that's still consistently um, you know, spinning all these narratives and fairy tales, especially when it comes to Miss Teresa. Miss Teresa ought to sue him for defamation of character. We really don't even know who he is. That picture that he showed on his community wall, it could be him. It could be a picture that he found on the internet. Um, you know, he, you know, and for him to um speak the way that he speaks, his voice is uh, even modified, in my opinion. That is probably not even the way that he speaks. Um, I think that is a voice modifier. I think that he possibly is an agent provocateur. But I know that he is leading the sheep down a path, down a wrong path, because I don't think that Miss Teresa had anything to do um, with her daughter's demise. I don't think that, you know. And uh, But I think that a lot of people were paid um, to cover this up. And so that's all I got. And I hope that you guys, if you are still with me, um, please go to my community wall and check out those two videos that I placed on my community wall. Uh, I think that the case was actually solved. They, they couldn't put all the pieces together. Um, the, the Turo lady, I think her name is Star something. Anyway, I'm putting her video on the community wall. It was of a couple of years ago when they were they are explaining um, that they believe that it is a body in the bag that the security guard is pulling down the ramp. And I absolutely agree with them. But after this video surfaced, um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that they was correct. This video surfaced three months ago. The, the Layla Lynn video surfaced three months ago because the actual unedited, this actual unedited part of the video, you know, proves that, um, you know, uh, it was Kanika Jenkins in the body bag, in my opinion. It proved it. It proves also that the guy with the mop, he was just not going around doing, why would you mop be mopping? Um, a kitchen that nobody uses that is supposed to be under repair locked behind a wood door. You know, why would you be in there mopping when they're not even using the kitchen? Clearly they hadn't used it for a while, you know, and then that's why it was supposed to be locked. So why would you be in there mopping? And and, and how is this thing um, on the floor? And the, the, the thing is not in use. The freezer is not in use, you know. And so also, what, what is this guy looking for? You know, he's coming out, he's zipping up his pants, he's adjusting himself, he's looking around the corner, like he's looking to see if anybody's watching. What is he doing that for? You know, sometimes things are just, you know, they are what they are, you know, and it don't matter what narrative you try to put on it, um, your eyes, you can't, you should never let somebody convince you um, that you're not seeing with your own eyes what you are actually seeing. 
right? And so, like I said, that is the reason why I'm put those two videos on the community wall. I hope that you guys will go to my community wall and take a look at both of those videos. The first one, the, the first video um, was done over two years ago. And the second video is an unedited version of the video, which Layla Lynn dropped three months ago, right? And so you decide for yourself what had happened. But like I said, if I was Miss Teresa, um, I would sue this Trey Gang person for defamation of character. Um, a whole lot of people think that Miss Teresa has something to do with her daughter's death. I do not. I think that the only person that is out for blood money in this scenario is the Trey Gang guy and those people that still are trying to spin some kind of false narrative when it comes to this case. But for me, um, justice has not been served. Um, you know, uh, you know, as far as the justice system, um, as far as um, any of them being brought to justice, but the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So I think that, um, you know, there is a higher judge, uh, and that, that judge is uh, the Lord Almighty. I think that karma is something else. So I think that anybody involved, anybody that had a role um, in drugging uh, 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 Kanika, um, you know, leading her to uh, that, that you know, you know, her final demise, I think that they all will get paid back, um, you know, via the Lord, because no arrests have ever been made. They couldn't arrest Shemaya or Monifa or anybody that plotted against Kanika uh, without bringing out the, the, the other video of what, of what happened to her after she tried to get away. Like I said, that's why the, they, could, they never arrested the hotel employees right at all only the security guard was questioned and after that he disappeared and there's a reason for that because they know if they would have arrested him or either um shamaya and her crew it would have brought about what really happened to kanika jenkins and the hotel owners um did absolutely didn't want it to come out and i think that there was a cover-up that is my opinion that is my theory um, you guys are welcome to, um, you know, dispute my theory. Um, let me know what you think about this video in the comment section. Respectfully, um, I have no need or, or no urge or I am not trying to go back and forth um, with this, 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 this Trey Gang guy or anybody or any of you that believe Miss Teresa has something to do with it. Any of you guys that still want to feed in these urban legends, I don't have any... Um, uh, I, I don't plan on going back and forth about my opinion. This is my opinion. And you guys have a right to your opinions. Please respectfully, um, if you disagree, you can do it, uh, you know, in a respectful manner. But that, like I said, that's all I got. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, after you subscribe to the channel, um, please uh, don't forget to hit that um, like button. I mean, that, uh, that, 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 <laughs> that notifications bell so that you will be notified. Um, when I post another video, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Rest in peace, Kanika. I'm so sorry that you had to go through this, Miss Teresa. Um, and justice will be served. You know, there is a higher judge, um, and it is not, uh, 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 uh you know, in a court of law when it comes to us human beings. It is a higher judge. That judge is karma. Justice is my sin, the Lord. Um, and if you wait on the Lord, all you got to do is sit back and watch and justice will be doled out. So rest in peace, Kanika Jenkins. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Peace.